and it says Tabernacle of Hedonism is on Monday, where's Tom Miller's face on this poster? There's a spot right there. Photoshop it off of the stripper. There's a spot right there. Okay. okay. I, I think I think this is uh, okay. This is this is intolerable. This is intolerable. <laughs> We are dispossessed. We are the bald-headed stepchildren. I quit the show. Out. I'll never do this show again in here. That's it. And Over. Never Gary, again. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Hey, Michael Garvin, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This is our last show. See you next week. Anyway, hang on. Don't go anywhere. Oh, my God. Everybody be quiet. There's only four people here. Now you're not allowed to leave. I got another act. Give me, give me one more act. Yeah, let's go. Give me one more act in the back, okay? Why don't you come up here? You don't want to come up here? You scared? I'll give you everything in the bucket if you come up here. Except for, except for this five dollars. A piece of gum, a condom, and a, and a... What does that say? Holy shit, you came up here? Yeah. Are you one of us now? Got your tar immediately. <laughs> Thank you. Looks out see you. Are you on the list? Yeah. Is that why you're all up in my grill and you're going to go on? Yeah. Is that what happened? Yeah. All right. Yeah. First. Yeah. Yeah. Shh. Just be quiet now. Let's just let's just fucking show a bit. And, and you're on the list. Where are you? Who are you? Second, you're, number two. Number two. So Bobby's got to go. Number two. Where are you? Will you wait for Bobby? Bobby, ladies and gentlemen, give a round of applause. I appreciate your patience. Go talk to ma'am. Very excited to be here, everybody. I've been here in like oh. six, six, seven months, maybe, here at the Tabernacle of Hedonism. Adam, right? Yes, that's my name. You used to wear button downs, now you got a beanie and a hoodie and a long beard. What happened? It's cold outside. Yes. Exactly that. It was Christmas also, time last time. It doesn't. It, that's not an excuse for the cold up. So, the, if, if you had Christmas time, the button down you saw was my Santa. Michael was right. This does kind of smell. Yeah, man, that's not. Right? Tom and I took it out that way. And not Sorry. like sticky cheese, like that. I think whatever you guys did would smell better than whatever this smells like right now. Um, but now I, I like the UC. I live in San Francisco, and uh, the UC is kind of like I don't know if you're familiar with San Francisco, but the gayest part of San Francisco is the Castro, and this feels like a slice of the Castro layered on top of another slice of the Castro, <laughs> layered on top of a third slice of the Castro. And it's, I like it. I like this place. Um, give it up for Tom, everybody. What a great host. What an amazing host. Why are you giving me that look? Right? What is that look? Cheap shit you just did. Cheap shit? What do you mean? No, I'm just <laughs> that's, the, that's the Tom sentiment I enjoy. But uh, t Today somebody told me that I look like I listen to Christian rock. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't like that you guys agreed with that. Yeah. Neither did our Lord and Savior, I'll be honest with you. Because that was offensive, because the, the fact that they used the word listen, like, the Christian rock thing's offensive enough, but they said, no way this guy has rhythm. Just bad taste. Question, I don't take questions, I'm not Michael. <laughs> What's your question? Uh, I was wondering if we could uh, give a hand of applause for Tom. No, 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 no. We are, I gave you the space for that, and now you regret the lack of reaction from earlier. Right. In the words of Tom, that's cheap. Um, Thank you. Now you understand me. I understand. Now I understand the youth Hitler haircut. Now I get it. Um, what are you saying? <laughs> uh, so I've been dealing with the process of cremation recently. I was the one who got cremated, in case you're wondering. My grandpa. What'd you say? Well. You're wearing sunglasses indoors, man. Give me a break. Cut me some slack. Uh, but yeah, we didn't want to create my grand cremate my grandpa, but uh, we just got tired of driving in places. Uh, but now, cremation's weird, because the person who, who 
you know, does the cremation as a mortician. And this is a person with a license to play with dead bodies. And some of you are like, that's an oversimplification. But it's not, because if it's an open casket funeral, they take the body, they do the hair, they do the makeup, they dress them up. Like a little girl playing with dolls. And if it's a cremation, then they burn the body. Like a little boy playing with dolls. <laughs> And cremation, they hand you this box of ashes, and you're just supposed to believe that that's that person, but like ashes just look like ashes. Like they could just, they could, they could just scooped them out of a charcoal grill and been like, yep, that's Boris. Now I get emotional anytime I see someone dumping out an ashtray. Grandpa, no. And this is how they make you feel like it's that person they gave you the jewelry they had on, like for my grandpa it was the wedding band. But he had shoes on when he died. We never got the shoes back. Boris's New Balance is running counted for. What are they doing with the shoes, you know? Do they just like throw them in a closet in a big pile? No way, right? So that'd be a little too... Auschwitz-y, right, Tom? Auschwitz-y. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> I can tell you guys are really enjoying this set, so I'm going to really elongate this as much as possible for maximum enjoyment. Um, Sweden, Sweden, the population of Sweden, statistically speaking, some of the happiest people in the world. It's all those antidepressants. You're going like to like, like what you hear next. Also, Sweden, some of the highest suicide rates in the world. Oh, yeah. Are those, are those really suicides? You know, are they really that happy? That's because all the sad people kill themselves. Or the Swedish police are, you know, knocking on people's doors, you know. Hey Bjorn, we noticed you're looking a real depressed lately. If you don't turn that frown upside down, you'll die. That's how that goes. You guys like my Swedish accent? Impeccable. Impeccable. All right, I'll leave you guys with this. I don't want to waste your guys' time. I can tell you guys' time is very valuable because it's like midnight on a Monday. So I know that all of you do not have a drop of time to waste. Especially the Reverend. Um, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ojamba. Welcome to the Ojamba sphere, everybody. In four more hours, it will be 420. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Guys, I don't think I'm going to do better than that. Give it up for your host, Tom Green. Thank you, and now I'm going to carve my liver out right in front of you and describe everything about it. Oh, wait, I'm talking about That was great, ha 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 ha, thank you. I really enjoyed that so much. And now ladies and gentlemen, let's do something different and have some comedy on the stage. How about Gigi, a round of applause. So I'm actually not gonna do comedy. <laughs> oh shit, I'm sorry. I'm gonna uh, perform some poems. Um, I wrote this one for a class. Um, it's called Sugar Fields Forever. Haphazard Caribbean summers were arranged by a woman with a lion's mane. Nietzsche taught me my realities. She came as a thought, free from simple pleasantries. I saw her standing in Miami Beach, dressed in pink, the sky an adversary of light, and the wind whipping her hair. I saw her again last night in a field, harvesting sugar cane. Hair tied back, saturated shirt, air thick with the scent of green. Like the sugar cane, she swayed, singing while slicing. In the radioactive heat, I started to sweat. But when she faced me, I could see nothing but the face of a changeling girl and her mother, the lion. From Havana to Spanish streets, she's chased me, leaving her awake tear shed over empty teacups. I dissolve into water. Like oil, she lingers, leaving a bad taste when I wait. Okay, so this one's called Early Bird. There's a 
quiet surrendering about waking up. It's like a morning the night. Candy-colored sunlight that kisses the bed sheets of talkative fishes. Now they flop over from the dream before, from visions of me standing at the shore. We met there once in a dream, holding each other bare until the salt had swallowed us whole and the whales had drifted to the bottom. You had asked, I would never laugh. Waking up in a pool of cold regret, my dream slipping as I forget what it's like to love you. I have become a castaway. My carcass is devoid of emotion. I surrender to the stink of dead scales that linger in the past. Now, I peel off rotting fishes and pass the stage of grief. Thank you. So now I'm going to do um, a poem after George L. Lyon, Leon, I think it's pronounced called Where I'm From. This is my own take on the poem. I am from blank pages, crisp from ages of waiting alone, and dan from dancing records and empty theaters, from the monotone keyboards in the music room. I am from hydrangeas, the old bouquet wilting on the kitchen counter, revivable with a bath and the typical florist TLC. I am from rice and beans with meat, served on decorative flower plates, idle music cutting atmosphere. I am from the loud mouths, the know-it-alls, and the math geniuses, from canos, prodigies, and old newspaper clippings of an era gone by. But I am not any of them, or really with them. I am from recite your times tables fast and facts about the world that crumbles around me. I am from did you practice violin yet? And stories of a world that has already crumbled and rebuilt itself. I am from people waiting on the side of an old road for someone to come and help them, yelling, Gado, Gado, only to be disappointed by the answer and to be reborn another day. I am from Cuban history books and stories, from the pots and pans clashing from the side of the road. Evil has died, victory is triumphant, patria y libertad. I am from the child listening to the grandmother say, I wish I could return, only for them to die, still waiting. I am from broken buildings and old Chevrolet cars, another vacation for rich Americans and influencers. I am from an empty hotel lobby in Greece, the minimal light illuminating the old telephone, my mother pressing the buttons, my father on the other side. I can't wait to see you again. He says it every trip. Are you sure? On my wall there used to be pictures of me. You could see the changes as I age. That face ever changing, but the eyes never fail to question me. Who is it you are? Who do you expect to become? Thank you. So this last one's a parody poem that I actually wrote yeah. in 10 minutes before the assignment was due. And it's probably one of my favorite poems that I've ever written. So this is a parody on Sunny Prescottin by Philip Larkin. I titled it Sunny Miami. Come to Miami Beach and come to out of the closet, grinned the slender man on the billboard, reclining on the glittery sand covered by a rainbow towel, wearing a tight-fitting blue speedo. Behind him, a hump spreads tanning oil across his shoulders. An art deco hotel with palms and beach chairs pops up from behind his muscular thighs and strong tattooed arms belonging to an absent face. He was plastered up there right before the summer. An icon extending an invitation to homosexual youths to stop the shop at the store. After his summer had passed, his face was missing teeth, and he magically grew a third eye. Huge, realistic graffiti tits and a bulging crotch were added to his lounging physique, and the space between the second man's legs held something quite large. A tuberous set of cock and balls situated right above Miami, the store spokesman's head. Autograph Ben Dover, a seemingly proud gentleman who managed to turn this gay icon into creature of the beyond. In the winter months, someone had used a knife to stab right through his blackout teeth and added a clown nose and tears to the all recognized, already all unrecognizable visage of Miami and a stud muffin. The world was not ready for his hospitable grin. Out of the closet was amended entirely by them no longer discernible to potential and curious customers that drove by the myriad of billboards on the highway. Very soon it became 
covered up, then replaced in what could only be described as the response of an unyielding society. By AIDS now stands in its place. Thank you. Applause, ladies and gentlemen. I was not expecting poetry. I thought you were going to be calling me. I, I, uh, I admire your courage, and I hope you take poetry to all the weirdest, wildest, and and uh, wrong and best places. It's not wrong here. I mean, we do poetry here for sure. But um, boy, that was good. Thank you very much. Really appreciate it. Gary, did you sell anything? It's one of these fucking people. Take some money out. Let's go. Buy something from Gary. I have five dollars. Get over here. Make it happen. I got a rock. I got a rock. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. I totally started my Christmas music, everybody. Peanuts. Thank you very much. That was excellent. Thank you. Please come back. I really love it. And make sure you get out to the Civic Media Center. You know, if you're in town. Reading. Go, to, go there and go to lots of places. Okay, right on. Wait, say that again. The wormhole is Thursday. Everybody hear that? Well, you can't make the poetry jam if you're at the wormhole. Well, but that's okay. Yeah. Well. Well, you gotta pick one. No, you don't. Do poetry wherever, wherever it needs to be done. All right, let's get out of here. Yay! Your music coming soon. Let's get the fuck out of here. Let's play some. Yeah. Let's play some music. Pour a couple drinks. Reverend, thank you very much. This was the best show we've ever done tonight. I got a cigarette. There's a condom and a stick of gum in there. If anybody wants to figure out how to work that out. Gum may or may not have LSD on it. Yeah, make sure you're not chewing the wrong thing in this club. You don't want no trouble. Reverend, you're the best. Get a t-shirt. I already bought one. I know, you are, I know you did. Thank you for being here. I'll do another. Hey, Michael. Nice work tonight. You're an ascot. Got a great ascot, Michael. Keep your back to the wall going down the steps. It's a university club. You don't want no trouble. I don't have anything else pithy to say. He probably liked that. I don't even think he smokes weed. If Michael had a hit of weed, he would like turn into a. Uh, what, what would happen to Michael if he had a hit of weed? It would be like that in Miracle with uh, the bread and the fish. Yeah, he'd, yeah he'd, turn, he'd feed the masses if he, if he had a, a hit of weed. It's slightly lazier and be a little less fashionable. God only knows. <laughs> hey. Thank you, Nia, the goddess. It was actually a pretty fun show. And apparently, we got out of here at a reasonable, respectable time. I mean, no reason to run off. You can have another drink with me before you go. Is it free? Get the fuck out. <laughs> Go home. Anyway, thank you. Congratulations, Mr. Mayor. I can't wait to vote for you for the next election. Thanks for being here. I love you. Uh, Jason, you're a badass. You know that. You already know that. What else? Reverend, you're a badass. James Wesson, you're always here. You're a badass. Everybody's got it. Gary, you're a badass. You got a condom, a stick of gum, a. Uh, is it like a fun one or is it a fun one? The condom? Yeah. No, no flavors, no, nothing. It's like and it's a is little, like it's a little one. It's it's for the. Hey. Oh yeah. Hey. There's nothing wrong with that. Oh okay. Yeah. Well. Who lied to you? Regular con condoms, I can pull them onto the entirety of my head. So I mean, if your dick's bigger than that, I don't want to know you. Well, See you later, bye. Oh, bye. This is over. Okay. Bluetooth. <laughs> you say that. What? <laughs>